All right, so here we are in Washington, D.C. with Dr. Michael Callahan. Uh, Dr. Callahan is one of our faculty at Exped Med and is an, a Harvard infectious disease expert who works with DARPA. Uh, so Michael, tell us a little bit about your career. You've been in wilderness medicine for many years. Uh, what, um, what exactly are you doing now and what, what are you participating in? Thanks, Greg. Uh, well, actually I got into wilderness medicine because uh, I was working as a rock climbing guide uh, as a paramedic for the Park Service. And I came across a flyer for the Wilderness Medical Society back in 1985. And uh, so I traveled down there and I beat a diesel pickup truck with a climbing friend and met my first, went to my first meeting. And I found physicians that were really invigorated with what they did. These were not the physicians that I knew from going into the emergency room. So the short version is that these became really mentors professionally as to how to bring together the venture an interesting lifestyle with uh, compassionate care and being able to deliver care, this time in a novel environment. In the following years, I took a track which uh, just led me to medical school and then I uh, continued disaster medicine training and my intersect really became sort of delivery of care in austere environments in the Wilderness Medical Society and the Wilderness Medical Community and then the Expedition Medical Community all provided ways to train and to practice that sort of medicine. So there were a number of Arctic expeditions, there were quite a number of Baffin Island expeditions, then the tropical expeditions started in sub-Saharan Africa, um, and then Indonesia, Vietnam, Laos. Uh, and this led to uh, a broadening of my interests into drug development, uh, particularly drugs that arose from venom, from snakes and spiders, and that led to the clinical practice of envenomation medicine, where I have a great luck to work with colleagues to set up envenoming studies throughout Southeast Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, and that uh, further diversify, you know, uh, my understanding of the needs for those developing areas, and how to deliver increasingly complicated care, life-saving care, such as antivenom, in really denied environments. So this was a, a, a great uh, jumping point for uh, both my academic career and my practice internationally. Um, there were some big events in disaster medicine, which really allowed me to practice on a grander scale the things that I would learn, you know, in the wilderness medical community. So what I would learn on trail side would sometimes be scaled in a dramatic way across many tens and tens and even hundreds of caregivers. And the examples are the tsunami, uh, the tsunami uh, in 2005, and uh, the Angola Wigi uh, Marlborg outbreak. So cases where we had to figure out how to do field diagnostics when there's no PCR machines around, and to understand if the blood was clotting or not when there's no PTT or PT assay. So these are examples of how you bring and become your own brand or collection of the expertise that's been given to you and your own sort of clinical journey. And it's led to a really fascinating time. The most recent, I think, evolution of things is I've reduced my travel and a lot of my expeditions and disaster responsibilities because I'm working for the federal agencies. Um, I have found uh, one of the ways in which I can do the most good is with uh, the funding agencies and to design programs that actually meet the needs of denied personnel, military or foreign born who live in austere environments and are really disenfranchised and unconnected with health care delivery systems. So be it refugee or be it some foreign born you know, some small rural individual population. We're now, for the first time, formally developing the capacities to meet their needs with our devices, our medical therapeutics, and even the way that we perform medicine. So that's been a delight. That's like so a, a whole bunch of things. You've been involved in yes. all, all sorts of things and just kind of followed your interest over the last, you know, exactly. Few years. Exactly. It so. It's a playbook that wrote itself. It's neat. Um, I don't get just I don't get sort of distracted with some general thematic goals, which is to have an adventurous and meaningful lifestyle and to be and to make healthcare um, part of that and to assemble the right people for the job. That's so great. A lot of what I do is um, now uh, I, I make teams, yeah. and those teams go forth and do much more than I could ever do by myself. So, you know, if someone is sitting in the audience at one of our conferences or comes up to you and says. Hey, Dr. Callahan, I want to have a career like yours. Uh, what, what's your advice to them? How do, they, how do they do some of these cool things that you're talking about? Uh, well, I think the thing to do is to maintain, you know, unfortunately, you've got to show up. Right. And you've got to take some risks. So you have to go to places where this care is exercised to get a complete understanding 
of what's going on. And you have to really question your intent for being there. For example, where there's a lot of uh, interest, but sometimes it wanes very quickly after an agency has invested huge resources in training a physician, nurse, or paramedic, and then they tire out. So mm. you need to figure out if it's right for you for the decades that you'll be involved. And that's a permanent part of your job and that you have staying power. So that's an important point. Um, and also, each of us is unique because we bring um, you know, this unique uh, convening of our own talents, resources, expertise, and passions. And it's assembled into something that's N equals one. And so you might have a specific need out there and to do your best, excuse me, a specific place where you belong and you fit it perfectly. You're the square peg for that square hole. And that'll, uh, you know, nobody else fits as good as you. Uh, and so that's been, uh, that you need to be vigilant of and, and to craft yourself to be that person, to yeah. fit that need. And also to perhaps recognize that it's time to pass the baton. And so I don't, oh, I don't climb as hard as I did before. I don't take the risks that I did before. And so uh, it's time to be, uh, time to bring the next generation forward too. So, and that's been a delight seeing those people fill those roles. And that's perhaps yeah. one of the, uh, that's a really good form of satisfaction. I think. One of our earlier interviews was with Eric Johnson, who was a past president of the Wilderness Medical Society. And he talked a little bit about that society. Yeah. What, um, I know you've been involved in the society for many years. You know, go ahead and I'll let you have your time to plug it because it is a great organization. No, it's I'm a great a product of the Wilderness Medical yeah. Society. It's, they were basically the first, and they were the first group to bring together physicians who were driven together by a passion and desire to really deliver care in the wilderness and really the austere care environment. They've gone on now to be one of the, the thought leaders for disaster care environments well, because in my hospitals, when you shut off the lights and shut off the power and shut off the water, that's a wilderness environment. Hmm. So many of those technologies ex and those uh, subject matter experts, they can retool their contribution for, for national preparedness and international disaster response. So the WMS is a great uh, resource, um, but they're one of many players. Mm -hmm. This is an international contribution, and the expertise lies internationally as well. So while the WMS is, uh, you know, has an international representation, we've definitely been enriched and learned from clinicians all around the world. And so showing up again and being prepared to listen rather than to speak and to get down on your knees at the trail side and to deal with the patients at bedside with uh, the local physicians has been one of the most enriching parts of this whole thing. That's great. Well, now, um, uh, lastly, uh, we have this new conference. It's coming up in November. And um, it's, a, it's a unique and uh, kind of a, 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 some people call it an eccentric conference because it's, uh, it's so unusual. But, but it's medical fusion. And, you know, we've, um, Eric Johnson talked a little bit about it in his interview, and I got some insights about it from Dr. Alan McGill. But, um, you know, you've been involved in a lot of things. What, what's your take on medical fusion? Do um, you think it's an important thing? Or, I mean, give us your feedback. What's being done with medical fusion is what is an organized consortium approach to what is done informally by physicians by themselves. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a way to scale what they do, be it healthcare or their love of taking care of people, alleviating pain or bringing joy, you know, to folks. Uh, something that is typically not associated with physicians, the bringing <laughs> joy part. Um, to, you know, to combine that with, with another one of their strengths. Physicians yeah. can be, you know, very entrepreneurial. They can be very creative. They can be work with wood. They can be hobbyists, great birders, sneakers, natural historians, and photographers. So being able to combine those two capacities produces new synergies, and that advances everything, potentially photography and healthcare. You have somebody who does great photo imagery, entrepreneurial investments, and a clinical healer who's using the powers of their, you know, their business acumen to fund the right stuff. Videographers, you know, and the physician who knows how to capture those tender moments or, or periods of intimacy cross-culturally in delivering care. This is a huge issue. And so, uh, and, you know, activities such as MedFusion and what we're, which is going to bring together all these people, I think is going to be a, an awesome opportunity, a new jump-off point. So it's formalized that which is informal and has allowed, uh, I think, those that are poised to make the jump to take this next big risk to really allow them to see examples ahead of who's done it and to be daring. And I think that that's perfect. That's great. Well, thanks for your time and thanks for speaking at the conference this weekend. And we'll see you in November at, at the Medical Fusion Conference. Be a delight. All right. Yes.